This incident occurred some time in the fall of 2006. I grew up in a rural part of Ohio. My house had fairly dense woods located directly behind it. As a child, I had a passion for exploring. I especially loved exploring those woods. It was my favorite place to be. Prior to this incident, I had wandered through those woods many times, always with my mother's permission. There was one tree in particular that I frequently enjoyed to climb, usually about to the halfway mark so I could perch myself on one of the heavier branches and just relax as I listened to the peaceful sounds of nature. Climbing that tree for the very first time was quite an accomplishment. From that position, I could partially see the back of my house. On that day, after a fair amount of exploring, I carefully scaled my favorite tree. I seated myself on a sturdy branch and took in the view. Naturally, being late in October, the sun inevitably began to set within a few minutes. I always felt a little saddened to see the darkness approaching. The woods were like my own little sanctuary. I could entertain myself out there for hours. When darkness began to fall, however, my mother would stand at the edge of the woods and call my name until I obediently returned home, so not to be stranded out there after dark. After watching the sun set until I could no longer see it, I began my descent down the tree. I was nearly at the bottom when I heard my mother's familiar voice calling my name. I thought nothing of it at first as this routine had occurred plenty of times before. Then I realized something strange as my feet touched the ground. My mother's voice was coming from behind me, deeper in the woods, rather than towards the entrance where she always stood when she called me home. My mom had never entered those woods before, at least not with me. I was eager to find her and show her all of my favorite spots before it grew too dark. That's when I realized something was off. How could she have gone into those woods ahead of me? Certainly I could have missed her, but as I said, she never entered those woods. She continued calling my name, but there was something strange about it. She sounded absolutely frantic, almost angry. Fearing that I was in trouble for reasons currently unknown, I froze in place. As her voice drew closer, I squinted my eyes to see if I could locate her and determine exactly how angry or upset she appeared to be. However, I didn't see anyone or anything unusual. Suddenly I heard her voice calling my name from the direction of my house, sounding much calmer. Seconds later, from somewhere within the woods yet again, it wasn't an echo. I wasn't imagining things. I was literally hearing her beckoning me from the edge of our backyard, as well as ahead of me. My legs suddenly turned to jelly. I couldn't quite comprehend what was going on. Come here right now, the voice that I originally believed to be hers screamed from just ahead. I realized that whoever or whatever was mimicking my mother was drawing closer. I didn't question which voice was actually my mother's, as there was something about the way it sounded that unnerved me. Terrified of what I would see if I stood there much longer, I turned around and ran towards the exit of the woods as quickly as my legs could possibly carry me. It was amazing that I didn't trip over anything in my haste. Even though my house wasn't very far away from me from where I was standing, those woods had never seemed larger to me than they did in that moment. From behind me, my mother's voice continued to call my name, now sounding desperate. Panic set in as my actual mother finally came into view, waiting patiently as she usually did until I returned home. In my frightened state, I absolutely refused to look back. As soon as I was out of the woods and in the backyard next to my mother, the other voice was suddenly gone. Rather than fading away, it seemed to stop the very moment I stepped foot into my backyard. I must have looked as frightened as I felt because my mother asked me what was wrong. Slowly but surely, my panic subsided. I didn't say anything until we were safely inside the house with our doors locked. I asked my mother if she had entered the woods. Appearing confused by the question, she told me that of course she didn't. With that confirmation, I hesitantly asked her if she had heard anyone else calling my name and yelling. The answer to that question was also no. Although I was still very much shaken up, I managed to explain everything that happened as clearly and rationally as possible. My mother was surprisingly nonchalant about the whole situation, explaining that I must have imagined it that I was spending too much time out there by myself. 
The incident in those woods had stayed with me to this day. I can still hear this voice as clear as a bell. Whoever or whatever is calling my name sounded exactly like my mother, but I know it wasn't her. Not only was she waiting for me outside, but the voice also sounded strange in a way that I still can't fully explain. I didn't go back into the woods until I was 17 years old, and even then, I never hung out for very long. I've carefully gone over every possible explanation, but none of them seemed entirely plausible. It certainly wasn't my mother playing a prank. There was no way she could have pulled it off, not to mention the fact that she's never been one to play pranks. I also highly doubt that it was anyone else because as I stated before, we lived in a very rural area. The closest neighbor was at least a mile away and I wasn't personally acquainted with any of them. How could they have known my name and where to find me? We've since moved out of that house but my mother and I occasionally discuss the incident. She still claims that she never heard or saw anything unusual out there. I know it probably shouldn't but what happened in those woods continues to bother me. I spent many hours out there prior to that day and never had anything out of the ordinary occur. The best explanation I have at this point is a doppelganger or possibly a demon, but I'm unsure. If anyone has a possible explanation as to what might have happened, I'd love to hear it. I'm a 23-year-old female used to not believe in ghosts at all. I'm a psychology student and used to think that everything can be chalked up to someone's own anxieties and fears. That was until last year. This happened in Colorado Springs on Gold Camp Road. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, you know that this place is a hotspot for urban legends and creepy ghost stories. The road is located on the side of a mountain and has several large tunnels dug through the mountain that you have to drive through to get to the end of the road. It's mostly used to get to scenic routes that overlook the city and hiking trails. There are also all sorts of scary stories that I'm sure you've heard of if you grew up in the area. The story goes that a bus full of small children crashed within one of the tunnels after it partially collapsed, and the spirits of those children are trapped in the tunnel. Supposedly, if you drive in the tunnel at night and come to a stop, turn your lights out, and put baby powder or flour on your windshield, Little ghost hands will smear the powder all around. Also, I'm not sure if this story has any validity to it, but I've been told a lot of people dump bodies over the side of the road. The cliffs and heavy wilderness apparently make it a good place to hide evidence. Anyway, this was all nonsense to me. I would drive the Gold Camp Road about once a week during the summer, as it was a beautiful night drive to take with friends and there are several pullover spots to smoke with relative certainty that you will not encounter any police. Now I won't be offended if you think that the fact that I was a little out of it may have contributed to what I saw. Anything's possible. Anyway, my friend, a 21 year old female and I spent about an hour one night smoking, walking around the scenic spots playing music until about 3 or 4 a.m. Again, we had been doing this exact routine all summer and were used to the dark creepy tunnels and the heavy woods at night. And this particular night was no different. That was until we started ascending to the peak. I'm not sure how to describe the feeling of getting to a certain point on the mountain, but it felt like a distinct passing over. There was a specific moment I remember feeling that we were in a completely different location. It was kind of like the moment in Spirited Away when all the spirits come out at night in the city in the beginning. It was like nothing was there and we were all alone and suddenly it just felt extremely populated. We couldn't see anything and it was still dark but it was like there was an energy all around us. It was like the sensation of being in a loud crowd without anything physical happening. I started to feel really uneasy and my friend told me she was getting a little creeped out. I told her it was okay, we were almost to the second tunnel and then we would descend. We entered the tunnel and the headlights lit up everything to the end. That's when I saw it. A very distinct, clear as day little boy was just standing to the right of the tunnel almost touching the wall. He didn't look exactly like a real boy that would be standing there, instead like an overexposed film photograph of a little boy. 
My friend and I both gasped, and I slammed the brakes dramatically. And then, just like that, it was gone. Now, I don't mean he disappeared. I mean we realized he was never there. You know that shock you get when you wake up in a dark room and you see a jacket hanging on the door, and for a split second are convinced someone is standing there, but as soon as your eyes adjust, you realize there was never anything there at all. It was like that, but there was nothing that we could have mistaken for any type of figure. The tunnel was lit up by headlights and there was no rock formation or pattern in the wall or anything, just smooth rock wall and the bright light of my headlights. I have never seen anything like it. What convinced me is that my friend saw it too, and neither of us had the stereotypical reaction of mistaking something for a ghost, like just jumping or feeling a shiver. I slammed my brakes because I was positive there was a child and then suddenly there never was. It's the most bizarre experience I have ever had. I will never doubt the existence of the paranormal ever again. All I can say is, don't always discount urban legends. They have a funny way of reaching out to you. I have a 10 month old son, great kid and is starting to crawl and move around on his own. Tonight before I put him to bed, he passed out on this big pillow in our living room after he had a bottle. I picked him up and put him in his crib in his room down the hall, then let the dog out and sat down to watch some TV before I brushed my teeth and went to bed. My dog walked down the hall to my bedroom to go to bed and about an hour later I get up to turn the TV off and notice my son asleep facing away from me on the same pillow I picked him up from an hour before. Now thinking that given his skill level at walking and crawling, there's no way he was getting out of his crib, down the hall and back there. I chalked it up to me not paying attention. So I walked over, picked him up, slung him over my left shoulder, went over to the front window, shut that, and went back down the hall to go to put him to bed. I opened the door to his room, turned the corner, and with the dim light from the nightlight, notice that he is in his crib, rolled towards me asleep. It took me a second to put together what was happening. How did I have him on my shoulder, and he was in the bed at the same time? What felt like a millisecond later, I heard my dog kind of bark or whimper in a confused tone right behind me. Then I looked to my left, bringing my arm down to see that his stuffed animal monkey is in my arm. Now I am sure as anything in my life that I picked up my son and that I would have known the difference between a 25 pound kid and a 1 pound stuffed animal. Now I've checked the carbon monoxide detector, the windows were open and I've only had a single beer tonight. The weirdest thing though is my big old black lab will not leave my son's room. I truly really am baffled. I am originally from Pakistan, specifically from a village near the city of Gujarat. The village is like a really small town essentially, and has a hill in the middle with a hundred year old home on top and some really old trees. The trees are like the ones you see in those horror movies, really dark with weed like things hanging off of them. The home belongs to the village's Nawab, which is a social caste in Pakistan, a high one rather. The home is decorated with amazing tiles that after a hundred years still look amazing. The rest of the home is deteriorated due to the Nawabs moving out of the village. My grandparents' home is in the same village and is pretty much ancient to any modern eyes and smack in the middle of the home is a grave of some supposed saint. It's more like a tomb with a decorated door. You can go inside and actually see the grave. It's actually quite a nice grave, decorated with marble tiles has some calligraphy on it and even has its own lighting. I assume all of this is to show respect to the saint. My mother, after she got married to my father, lived in that home with my grandparents since it's Pakistani custom that the wife go live with the in-laws after marriage. One day she told me that she decided to take a nap outside near the grave. She goes on to say that she woke up from her nap and when she opened her eyes she saw this extremely tall figure. She described his height as never-ending, 
It almost looked like his head touched the sky. She said he was wearing a traditional Pakistani men's dress called a shalwar kameez. She didn't see the man's face, but said his feet were huge. This was spooky enough on its own, but what spooked me out even more is when she told the story again at a family gathering, her twin sister said that when she was visiting her a few years back, she too decided to take a nap near the grave and woke up to the same figure. Never-ending height, same dress but in a different color. That same aunt who is into spiritualism and even deciphers dreams says that she thinks the saint protects the home. I have to admit even I felt weirded out by the grave sometimes but never felt anything malevolent coming from it. Then again, I am not really a spiritual person. I asked my dad who lived in that house for his childhood. He said his aunt said that one day she was alone in the house and around dawn time she would usually light a lamp in the tomb. This particular day she forgot to or for some reason didn't. She then went on to say that at dawn when she would go to lock the door leading outside, the lock would keep opening when she'd return to her room. The way she knew this is because this was an old door with old locks with those metal rods and handles you twist and turn to lock. They make a lot of sound when being opened or closed. Now to get back to the outside door you have to pass that tomb. She said that she locked the outside door three times but it kept opening for some odd reason. She said the fourth time she went to lock the door, on the way she decided to light the lamp in the tomb, then went to lock the door. After that attempt, it didn't open at all. My dad also tells me that this isn't the only grave in the village. He also said that he ordered the grave to be renovated and a tomb to be made to protect it from the elements. He says that there's a bunch of graves inside land owned by folks and even inside of other people's homes so you never know what kind of spirits or entities lurk around there. This past Saturday on January 5th, my great uncle passed away unexpectedly in his home. We will call him Uncle Will. Myself and about 20 members of my family met up at Uncle Will's high-rise apartment, which was not far from where I lived. We stood outside his apartment door while the police and people from the morgue cleaned up the scene and prepared to remove the body. Immediately after they left, half of us entered the apartment. My relatives start the process of removing contents from the fridge, disposing of cigarette butts, empty bottles, etc. I'm just aimlessly walking around the apartment, which is a one bed, one bathroom, when suddenly I get this urge to download the Ghost Radar app. I have always been into paranormal and was anxious to see if my uncle's spirit would come through. I didn't think anything of it when I opened the app because the first two words that populated were children and community. But as I walk into his bedroom the app flashes enter and as I'm turning towards the bathroom it says almost. Then all of a sudden I get this feeling to want to search the linen closet. I see normal bath products but there is a box that appears out of place and looks like it has important documents on it. I look down and there is a money order. The app then says exact. I'm holding the money order in my hand and in walks my aunt who shouts, Oh my god, C found the money order. She looks at me and says, How did you know where it was? I told her I had this feeling and the app sort of led me to it. I had no idea that they were looking for it. It turns out the money order was his last rent payment. I would like to think it was my Uncle Will communicating with me through the app one last time. Now two days later, his younger brother Uncle Jay, who had been battling cancer for less than a year, passed away. I also learned that, after, Uncle Will visited my Uncle Jay in the hospital just a week before his passing. He was crying profusely and saying he would rather leave than watch his younger brother die. This has been a very difficult time for my family. I'm still in disbelief that we lost two loved ones in such a short period of time. I have worked at four different hotels. One of my owners once told me that any hotel over 10 years old will have had deaths in it. The only hotels that don't are because they are brand new. 
so I started asking the others on my call arounds. Every hotel in my area had at least one death in the past three years, if not more. If it's had deaths, then 100% are haunted, and 100% of older hotels are guaranteed to be haunted. In my six years, I worked shift for two deaths at different hotels. One natural, one worse. My ex worked at a hotel with one room that was never rented and used as storage because it was the site of a well-known serial killer double homicide back in the 60s. Deaths in hotels are not rare. I do not subscribe to the death equals haunted formula of my hotels only one acted haunted in my time there. I was strictly night shift, sometimes 7pm to 7am, sometimes 10pm to 7am. At 11pm I would get to lock all the doors and deal with people through a night window. I love this as I generally dislike people but I am good at acting the part of wonderful customer service employee. Hospitality is my middle name, but after 11pm I got to close off my domain of lobby slash office, front desk and breakfast room all combined and be left alone till breakfast, so I think that's all the setup I need for you to know about my private little kingdom under lock and key where all this takes place during my solo hours. A few weeks into my job I was scrolling on my phone and bam, the breakfast room doors thundered then rattled to a stop like they'd been kicked by a mule. I glanced at my security camera which focuses on those doors, nothing there. I rewind a few seconds, nothing so I go a bit further, still nothing. A full minute back and rewatch it till the moment I see myself jump on office cam. Nothing. The doors don't even move. But I've heard kids slam those double French doors. That's what they sound like. That's where the noise came from. I walked around the office, lobby, and breakfast room peering out the windows cause maybe I'd heard a car wreck. Nothing. I check my bucket. Nobody is in the room above my office or breakfast rooms. These are often the ones we sell last at the morning activity, or me playing music for myself at night, and it sometimes disturbs people. This exploding door kick becomes a theme, but it's not just the breakfast room doors. It's the lobby doors that I can clearly see out from my perch behind the counter. Even more unnerving, the private office entrance door that is unlabeled and only employees use to enter the back of the front desk becomes a target for these sporadic unseen kicks. I keep a FD journal of anything that happens during our shift, anything that might be an issue for other shifts, complaints, special requests, anything out of the norm. I start noting the sounds in the journal and ask my coworkers if they've noticed any strange noises. Nobody else has, even the other night shift workers, but they did have a high turnover rate. Other than the front desk manager and housekeepers within six months, I was the next longest employee. Other night shifters never lasted than three months and I worked every Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday so they always got weekends off work always but never stayed long. Next the ice machine started coming on and just spitting ice out onto the breakfast room floor. This was less common than the booming doors but it happened a handful of times in my two years there. It never happened on anyone else's shift as far as I could find out. The owners just said it was a machine malfunction and mostly ignored me, telling me just to clean it up when it happened and reminded me to put out a wet floor caution sign if it was near breakfast time. Yet the owners were Indian and after this started showing up at dawn and blessing my kingdom more often. After that was the clicking. If you've ever heard a dog that needs its nails trimmed trotting across a hardwood floor, that's the noise. At first I was on the lookout for a big rat or other critter but security cameras and my vigilant searched armed with a broom yielded nothing. I still told the owners to call pest control to be safe but they found no evidence of a furry friend, caught nothing and bait traps were left untouched. This became a routine sound too. Near the end of my time there I was on my phone with a friend one night on the far back of my office, away from the desk in the L part where my industrial coffee makers are and a small whiteboard we used to track daily numbers flew off the wall and smacked me almost square in the face then dropped to the floor at my feet. It was odd because it's fallen before and it ends up straight down on what we call the load desk where the manager works during the day. I was several steps away, say roughly eight feet from that desk. There was no breeze to make it travel at an angle, and even if it had, it was mounted just barely above face level for me. 
it had to travel nearly straight sideways to smack me in the mug. I laughed it off, but I really kicked myself for not using my camera and getting a recording of the security footage at the time. It's the strongest evidence I've ever had of any of my paranormal events, and I just derped out. I guess I did have bigger issues in my life at the time that I was talking to a friend about, but boy was I dumb. Feel free to tell me how dumb I was. If it speaks to how distracted I was during that time in my life, that was when I worked straight through a death one empty room away from my office and didn't even notice. Now I assume most people that browse here are at least somewhat believers of the supernatural. I, however, am not. It probably makes no sense that I am posting my stories here, but although I believe it to be my own mind, you might perceive my stories differently. For context, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia about two years ago, although the psychologist said it was a minor case, whatever that means. For years I've struggled with illusions, figments of my imagination, although I have seen a variety of oddities throughout the years, four have remained consistent. I will briefly describe these three conjurations. 1. The Man This one is the simplest, the easiest to describe and least unnerving. I see this man in corners. He stands still as stone. Whether he is facing me or not is impossible to tell. All I can make out is the silhouette. That's about it for him. He doesn't do anything aside from that. He doesn't appear on camera which supports my belief that it is a figment of my imagination. 2. The Tall Figure This one scares me. I see it outside, whether it's standing behind a wall, peering over me, or in and out of the hallway by the door frame of my room. I get a strange feeling when this one is nearby, a heavy weight in my chest, and my biggest concern about this one is that my friends claim to have seen it too. In fact, one has taken multiple photos and some of them appear to have the strange formation which I will post if requested. 3. The Crawling Thing Simply the thought of this makes my hair stand up and brings tears to my eyes. I have seen this guy more than any of the others, and this thing quickly scurries towards me only to vanish when my eyes adjust enough to almost make out what it is. I hear whispering and sometimes screaming just before I see it. On one occasion I was holding my cat, walking from the kitchen down the short passageway to my room when something screamed in my ear. I let out a loud and fast scream and had to catch my breath. I realized that I had dropped my cat. I turned to see her staring into the darkness, eyes fixated on something. I simply stared. I saw something move in the darkness. I rushed to grab my cat and ran into my room. I entered panic mode. I locked the door and closed the windows. I understand now that that's stupid and would have made no difference, but the genuine fear had clouded my mind. Instinct kicked in, and I needed to be isolated. I sometimes feel like I'm losing my mind. My anxiety is consistent, and I barely sleep without medication. I will continue to try and document these things. I will try to catch them on camera. Perhaps I tell myself they're in my head, because that way I know they can't physically affect me. But of course, I might be wrong. Time will tell. I used to live in a modern apartment complex with a doorman, an elevator, and a sliding key fobs to access your space. One morning I had just gotten off of work when I took a shower and prepared for bed. I work 7pm to 7am so this was my usual routine in the morning. After the shower I closed the bathroom door and sat at my kitchen table preparing cereal while I watched the morning news. I started to nod off to sleep between bites of mini wheats. Suddenly I hear a plastic bag rustling. I look behind me and notice that my boyfriend has hooked a plastic bag onto the trash can lid with a note that says, I'll pick up bags later. I turn back to eating when there is another rustle. I ignore it and start nodding. The bag starts rustling louder, almost violently. I call out sleepily, oh, Leave me alone, man. I stand up to put my bowl in the sink when there's a huge crash in the bathroom with glass breaking. I quickly run to the bathroom and swing the door open. There's nothing out of place. 
I start talking to myself. You're going crazy, Jack. Must have been somewhere else. The toothpaste flies off the bathroom shelf and lands in front of where I'm standing. Alright, I'm done. I close the door and started walking away when I hear a loud bam against the inside of the door and I jump. Leave me alone, you're scaring me. I keep walking when I hear a faint knocking sound on my apartment door across the room. I assume it's a maintenance man and shuffle over to the open door. Suddenly the knocking stops and I hear an old man's voice on the other side and keys jingling and the sound of locks turning. We use electric key fobs. I'm extremely confused and look out the peephole. No one. I open the door and look out. The hallway is clear. Suddenly the maintenance men get off the elevator. I ask them if they're performing maintenance on the apartments on my floor and they said not today. They just came in to fix a leak upstairs and trace the damage below. I close my door and walk to my bedroom. I quickly slip under the covers. Before I can lay my head down, the bag rustles. I lift my head and listen, but it stops. Again, before my head touches the pillow, the bag starts rustling. This happens four separate times. Mess with the bag all you want. I'm going to sleep. I start to hear keys jingling again. Now something is tapping the inside of the bathroom door. It's like a weird crescendo of noise and I can't take it. Stop! All sounds stop and I lay my head down and close my eyes. I hear an old man's voice and my eyes pop open. It sounds like he's speaking into a microphone. Hello? 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 The final hello sounded like he seemed annoyed. Do you think I care about making contact right now? Let me sleep. The apartment is quiet and I close my eyes, listening to the news. Abruptly, the television goes off by itself and I fall asleep. Like I said, it happens often, but I mostly ignore it. I live with my great-grandparents, my grandma, my mom, and my brother. My great-grandparents got this house 50 years ago and have lived in it ever since. My grandpa passed away last October and his stuff is currently in my closet. I stay in an old storage room so everything that is not put into use is in my room. So ever since I got this mirror, around Thanksgiving, from my grandmother, crazy stuff has been happening. My grandmother got it from a kinda sorta not completely abandoned house. The landlord moved out of that house but left some of his stuff there so my grandpa took some stuff which is where the mirror came from. My grandparents lived in a bungalow behind the house. When cleaning out the house I saw the mirror and asked my grandmother if I could have it because I thought it was pretty. I did not know how old the mirror is but it's kind of worn down. Anyways, the mirror was sitting on the bookshelf because I hadn't hung it up yet. One day I was cleaning my room and the mirror literally flipped and landed in the middle of my room. There was no logical way that this could have happened because I did not make any movement that could have caused it to flip, and it went too far, it was kind of like someone pushed it. The mirror didn't crack, it was completely fine so I didn't think much of it and set it on my dresser so it wouldn't fall again. Maybe two weeks after that my deodorant was sitting on my headboard and flipped and landed in the middle of my room. At the time, I was on my phone with my boyfriend, so I told him about it, put the deodorant back, jokes around a bit, and that was it. Now, we were going to talk about things that have recently happened. So, me and my boyfriend have basically been stepping our relationship up a bit. And any time we talk about something like that, or we are up to something over the phone, something weird happens. So, I went to shower while I was Skyping him, and my phone started messing up, so the call ended. I ran out of the shower and called him back ASAP, took me like 5 minutes. One night after we were talking about things, it was around 3.30am, he was asleep and we were still on the phone. My closet door started wiggling back and forth and that continued all night. I can't remember anything else that happened because I've gotten so used to it by now. Tonight I was doing something and the bottle that was on my headboard fell right next to my head. Maybe it's because I was moving a lot, I'm not sure, but that freaked me out. 
and just now as I'm typing this, the wax warmer or lamp got darker and then got brighter. I was talking to two of my friends about it and they told me some story about what has happened at my house. The first friend said my Harley Quinn doll fell off my dresser shelf. It's old and it has a huge mirror and two shelves on each side and landed on my floor so she picked it up and set it on my dresser. When she came back it was sitting on my bookshelf. My other friend said she woke up and randomly in the middle of the night she couldn't move and saw a white figure in the corner of my room and she started crying. Both of them just now informed me about this tonight. I also have a porcelain doll that I got from my 5th grade dance as a prize. I'm in 10th grade now. I did not know the history of the doll, but it had moved before. It's a doll with brown hair and she's a bridesmaid. It started turning and moving on its own, so my mom took it and put it in the top of her closet. Maybe the beginning of this year and we haven't taken it out since. But I've been talking about it. Now I'm not so sure if I want to or not. I honestly don't know what to do at this point. I don't know what's going on and it creeps me out. I'm scared to move and if you want pictures of the objects I can give them to you in the morning. It's currently 2.55am. Can someone help me or tell me what to do? It would be much appreciated. Thank you for reading. Several years ago I had an experience where a mirror in my room broke on its own. I was watching TV and heard a loud thud in my bedroom. We had recently had an issue with a peeping Tom so I was concerned the person had escalated and broke into the house. My roommate and I took up our weapons of choice and checked the house for any signs of intrusion but found nothing. When I went to bed that night I noticed the mirror that was attached to my sliding closet door was now face down on the door. I figured the adhesive strips had just come loose but upon further inspection they were ripped down the middle. They were the old school strips that had two adhesive strips separated by a thin layer of foam, not the removable command strips. I shrugged it off and propped the mirror against the wall outside the foot of my bed. That night I woke up to a crash and something shaking my bed. I got up and turned the lights on and somehow the mirror had landed face down on my bed on the opposite side of where I lay towards the foot of the bed. I couldn't think of any logical way it could have tipped over. As I left it at nearly a 45 degree angle specifically so it wouldn't tip over and break, let alone how it would have crossed the three feet between my wall and my bed and still somehow gotten off the floor completely and onto my bed. Needless to say I was pretty freaked out but I was also a single person fairly new to the city and broke so staying elsewhere just wasn't an option unless I slept in my car which seemed even worse. So I cleaned up the mess, investigated the house again, except my sleeping roommate's room, and convinced myself I just misremembered how the mirror was placed when I put it against the wall in the first place. After tossing and turning for a while, I finally fell back asleep. I woke up again with my arms outstretched towards the ceiling as if I was reaching for something. They were already fully extended before I was coherent. When I looked up, it looked like a tentacle was squirming from the center of my light fixture. It was pretty dark in my room but the tentacle was even darker. I waited for my vision to settle assuming it was just my eyes messing with me at night and because I was freaked out from the previous event. When it didn't go away, I started to panic and rushed to my light switch. I was 100% expecting to turn on the lights and feel relief that nothing was there. But when I turned on the light, I saw a massive black snake slowly slither from the light fixture to the corner of my ceiling and then disappear into the corner as if it was a hole. It was like the silhouette of the snake, similar to how Peter Pan's shadow is illustrated. At that point I decided to pack my stuff and leave for my road trip early. My trip was fine and nothing crazy happened after that until last night. I don't recall exactly when the first event happened but it's been at least three years since I've lived in that apartment. I made the mistake of reading about some Three Kings stories I stumbled upon on here before falling asleep on the couch. I woke up to a tickling sensation on my arm. As my eyes focused I saw a black spider the size of a quarter on my forearm. I panicked and made a brushing motion to get it off my arm. I turned on the lights and moved the couch cushions around to see if I could find it again so I could get it out of the house. After finding nothing I 
turned to switch the lights back off and saw it on the wall above the couch. Perfect. I might be able to toss it outside and have some chance of sleeping again in my life. But then the spider casually crawled to the corner of the ceiling and disappeared just like the snake did. I literally got a stole out and checked the corner of the room to see if it was balled up in the corner or if there was maybe a hole or crack it could have disappeared into. Nothing. Is this something I should be concerned about? I've done some googling but everything I've come across is either shadow people associated with sleep paralysis, and I clearly wasn't paralyzed, or Native American spirit guides which didn't seem like the right direction either. Has anyone else experienced something like this? Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r let's read official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly, and if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.